Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Rossetti, your man from Movie Picks, and here we are in part three of our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in part three, we're going to actually start assembling our movie. And as you assemble your movie, the vast majority of what you're going to be doing is essentially adding media to the timeline, adding your video, adding your photos, adding your audio clips, cutting away what you don't want, and then assembling what's left there into a viable story. And so learning how the timeline functions and how the tools on the timeline function, well, that can take you a long way toward making this whole process simpler. So to start out, I'm just going to grab some clips and drag them down to video track one for demonstration purposes. And we'll grab one clip and drag it over top of the other two on video track two, just so you can see how it all works together. Now to the left of the timeline are some tools that will become helpful as you work on the timeline. At the top of this tool set is the selection tool and this is what you're going to be using the vast majority of time as you edit video on your timeline. But there's also a track select forward tool. In other words, with this selected, when I click on a clip on the timeline, everything to the right of it is also selected. Let's click away from that to deselect. This is the track backward selection tool. And when I select a clip on the timeline, everything to the left of it will be selected. We'll click away from that to deselect those. This is the ripple edit tool, which I'll explain in just a moment. The rate stretch tool for controlling the playback speed of your movie. The scissors tool, which we'll use to slice into our movie and to slice certain things out of our clips the title tool or the text tool, which I'll explain more of when we start talking about titles later in this course. The music remix tool, which is a whole separate tutorial. And the rectangle tool, with the rectangle tool selected, you can actually lasso your clips on the timeline just by dragging across them. Let's click off those and deselect all of those. How do all of those tools work together? And what is ripple function? And why is understanding ripple function important? Well, if I were to select a clip on the timeline here and then trim off the end of that clip just by hovering over the end, clicking and dragging in, you notice that it shortens the clip, but it also leaves a gap in my timeline. That's because by default, there is no ripple function on the timeline in Premiere Elements 2025. Let's Control Z or Command Z to undo that. If on the other hand, I select the ripple edit tool for my toolkit here to the left of the timeline, and I select that clip and trim it, notice what happens. The other clips move from the right to the left to fill in the gap. Even if I were to remove from the beginning of that clip, everything moves from the right to the left to fill in the gap. That's called rippling, all right? One thing affects everything else on the timeline. I can also expand that clip or untrim it and everything will move off to the right to allow for that. Knowing when to use ripple edit is a key to understanding how to assemble your movie or to actually to work within your movie to add clips to it. If I were to drag a clip from my project assets onto a scene between two clips on the timeline, watch what happens when I let go. It actually overwrites all of the clips on the timeline. That's the default function of adding to your timeline. Well, I'm going to Control Z or Command Z to undo that. On the other hand, if I were to hold down the Control or Command key and drag a clip between two clips on my timeline, watch what happens. Everything ripples. It moves off to the right to allow me to insert the clip. What about if I remove a clip? Well, if I select a clip on the timeline and press the Delete button on my keyboard, it leaves a gap. Let's Control Z or Command Z to undo that. Most of the time when I'm removing a clip on my timeline, I want that gap to fill in. So to make it fill in, I select the clip on my timeline and then press instead the backspace key. This cuts away the clip and it fills in the gap. So we get a ripple function. Likewise, if I were to use the slicing tool or the scissors tool to cut a piece of a clip and then select it, and if I click the backspace button to delete it, the gap fills in. So understanding how Ripple functions, when it functions, when it doesn't function, those are kind of the keys to building out and assembling your movie, especially as you're reordering the clips on your timeline. And those are the basics of assembling your movie on your timeline. Like I say, that's 90% of what making a movie is, is just putting the clips in the right order, throwing away what you don't want, and making a story out of what's left. 
Now in part four of our course, we're going to take a look at how to make things a little more interesting by adding some transitions. That's coming up in part four. I hope you'll continue to stay with us here for basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. I'm Steve Grisetti.